Welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm Bishop Peter Katimo, and I'm reaching up to you with the message of Christ from Apostolic Faith Church, Bahati, Nairobi. We love you so much. Thank you for subscribing to our YouTube. The Lord bless you. The Lord touch your life. The Lord reach down to those areas, those various mountains in your life that, that only God can, 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 can give solution. Thank you. Today we have come and you are there and Jesus is right with us. Ages are ministering. I know as I preach ages, you minister healing. As I preach ages, you minister deliverance. I know somebody there who is unable to pray. God, you quicken you and you pray and pray. God, you raise your position from being a slave to taking dominion. In just Christ's name. Our topic today is the life from what Christ did. You know, the Bible talks about the last seven words that Christ uttered at the cross. And the sixth one is in John 19 verse 30, where Christ said, mm -hmm. let's see that scripture. Uh -huh. Let's see. But, so when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said it is finished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. Although this may be considered to be um, the, 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 the sixth one, I think it should be in practice the final word. The final one. It is finished. It is finished. Now it is finished. What was Christ doing on the cross? One, we lived as human beings. Sinners by choice. Because at the, at the Garden of Eden, Eve and Adam sinned out of their own will. They knew the law. They knew God's purpose. They knew who God was and who God is. But they yielded to the, to the proposals of the devil, not by force, but by choice. In other words, they agreed with the devil and the devil was able to arouse, arouse their, arouse their, their, uh, 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 their lust, lust. And you know, in the Bible we say there are three ways that the devil always work out our downfall. One, it is the first John chapter two verse sixteen: the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Can I repeat again? Three avenues that devil uses, he used on Adam. That, that is the last of the eye, the last of the flesh, and the pride of life. Adam, Eve failed. The Bible says, when, when, when Satan said, ye shall be like God. Actually, that's the main doctrine of Satanism. Ye shall be. It's self-worship, self-worship, self-worship. Ye shall be like God. Instead of bowing to God, you, 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 you worship your desire. Yeah? Be yourself. Do what you feel. That, that's a problem. It's, it's a main doctrine of Satanism. It's a bad one. And we are saying this. When the devil proposed that ye shall be like God, the Bible says the woman who had earlier confessed the word and said it is so clear when we touch or eat of the fruit, we shall die. The Bible says immediately she looked at the tree and the fruit and saw how it was good desirable for food that is last of the eye and then it was good for food last of the flesh and she imagined how she shall be after eating ye shall be like god pride of life she fell in three avenues that devil uses to destroy men of god however anointed you are you must pass the three tests i say you must pass the three tests joseph in potiphar's house passed the three tests Remember when the wife of Potiphar said, lie with me, lie with me. She said, how can I do such an evil in the eyes of God? Men who have become finishers of the race, like Paul who finished the race, I've finished the race, I've kept the fight, and I've kept the faith, I've fought the good fight. Listen, there, finished the race, kept the faith, uh, fought the good fight. Those people who get to that level are people who have graduated in three areas. Last of the eye lust of the flesh and the pride of life. You must get this. Young boys, 
Your talents are destroyed by those. You used to be a good student in the university. First year, you yielded to sex, sexual uh, enticement, you yielded to drugs, social peer pressure. You need to overcome that. No one will be able to excel in his or her talent if you do not overcome the three avenues of lust. I remind you again, 1 John chapter 2, verse 16, lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. They come from the devil. And the Bible says, the world passes away and the last thereof. But he who does the will of God will abide forever. And therefore, we, are, we were slaves. We, after yielding to the will of the devil, Satan, actually we gave Satan right to rule over. And that's why among the three temptations or tests of Jesus, in Matthew chapter 4 and Luke chapter 4, where Satan appeared after Jesus fasted for 40 days, among the three was devil blood all the kingdoms of the world and the glory therein. And said to Christ, Christ bow before me. In other words, Satan was saying, Jesus, instead of me and you meeting at the cross, that battle, why don't you bow and I give these kingdoms freely? And Christ said, no, no. You, you will not give me kingdom by bowing. I will not get the kingdoms by bowing to you. I will get the kingdom by violence. For the violent take the kingdom by force. And therefore, Christ overcame. Christ overcame. Actually, in the, if you go to Matthew chapter 4, uh, lead from verse 4 to verse 11, the same Luke chapter 4 from maybe verse 4 to verse 12 allowed there, the three tests, lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, turn stone to be bled, lust of the eye, bow to me, I give those all this kingdom, yes, pride, yes, fall, and God you command angels to hold you up. All these, Christ overcame. And the Bible says, if you check, when the devil ended all temptations, he departed and angels ministered to Jesus Christ. It's very clear. If you go, mm -hmm, uh -huh. the Bible talks about Christ finished the, the battle of testing in uh, Luke chapter 4 verse 12. And Jesus answered and said to him, it has been said, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Now the devil had a dead every temptation. When you are through with the lust of the eye, pride of life, lust of the flesh, it will also be written for you the same way. And Satan is through with you now. Waiting, maybe, the Bible says, the devil went until an opportune time. In other words, until a chance that can be available in future. But when you go to Matthew, Matthew chapter 4, Matthew chapter 4, it says something very uh, the same. Matthew chapter 4. Let's go there very quickly by God's grace. If you have a phone, if you have a tablet, no, let's go there. Matthew chapter 4, the Bible says in uh, uh, verse 10, And Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. Verse 11, Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. I like this. Can you, can, you, can you stop talking about Satan appearing to you at night and, uh, you know, demons moving around, hovering your business? I would like you to overcome the three tests. Graduate. Let it be clear. Satan added temptation and angels ministered to you. And you go to the Bible. The book of Mark, the Luke says, and after that, Jesus went back. What do you mean by going back? It's going back to the same place where people were used to you, where you failed, where you used to be just a neighbor, a young boy, a, a radical, something. You, you, just, you just used to be ordinary. You were rejected. People interpreted you using the background, the failures. But after overcoming this, the Holy Ghost empowers you, and you go back in power. And you be able to produce news because of blessings. Now, what happened? You know, the kingdom are with the devil. And we are the one who gave Satan the kingdom. So we have three things. 
holy God exalted, who is not dependent. He never depends on it. He can wipe us away and still create other people. He can destroy us. You know, God is so holy that he is not in need. He is so complete. He is not in need. He is so much powerful, he can never lack power. And even the power which is not known, beyond power, he has it. From everlasting to everlasting, he is God. And therefore, now there's this God who is omniscient, omnipotent, all-wise, self-existing God. And some creatures like us there, who think, who are deceived. You know, that's why Christ, in, Christ said in John, in the gospel, he said, when you talk about the true vine, he said, With, just as a branch cannot exist without the main tree, the same way you cannot exist without me. Without me, you can do nothing. And therefore, friends, God is the owner of life, and yet we are pride about, proud about that life, and we are misusing it. No one, let me something, this material here, meat, whatever, no one can manufacture this. No one. No one can create meat. No one can create bone. No one can create your nose. No one can create. Even the tree you see around, no one can create. I thank God when we went to school, they, they taught us physics. They said, matter cannot be created. Neither can it be destroyed, but can only be changed, transformed from one form to another. That is final. People who are moving around say there is no God. Can we now go back to physics? If matter cannot be created, matter cannot be destroyed, can only be interfered with by men, change it from one form to another, then there should be power behind my creation of matter. And matter can, cannot exist by, by uh, some strange forces coming into collation and commanding and causing matter to exist. No, there should be life, our, there should be God who is able. And by the way, Bible is so clear, if you have a problem in believing in God, why, why don't you believe in miracles and great works that are manifested through his name? Um, personally, I have seen things happen. And God is so clear. And therefore Christ on the cross stood between holy, excellent God and desperate, proud, self-centered men. And Christ said now, Father, these people were deceived. They gave up the kingdom. I want to shed my blood, precious blood. It is the blood of God. And Lord, when I shed this blood, let us speak forgiveness. Let us speak mercy. And through my blood, let them have, uh, obtain, let them obtain salvation, obtain mercy from you, Lord. When Christ says it is finished, he says, I have offered enough sacrifice to make people get saved. I have met the demands of the Father to allow these people to obtain mercy. I have met, number two, I have released enough power to the powers of darkness. Because the Bible says in, in Revelation chapter 1 verse 18, fear not, I am the one who died and I am alive forevermore. And in my hands I have keys for death and Hades. Hades is where Satan reigns with the death. I have key for death itself and where dominion of death reigns. In other words, the second part where Christ is, it is finished is this. I've dealt with the Satan and the power, my, the power I've used is this. Satan from the beginning has ruled the world through death. Death is the last enemy. Satan has used death as the terminal head. Christ came and said, no, 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 no. I will deal with the death and where death reigns and then I will rise from the dead so that whoever believes in me, death is not the head but way to eternity. 
I've made it is finished. Whoever dies in the Lord, we will not have we will not add there. They will rise up the way Christ rose up. It is finished. The demands of the Father, so that we can obtain mercy, are met by the blood of Christ. Whoever believes in Christ, whoever prays the blood of Christ, will have access to the Father in eternal life. It is finished. Yes, I've released authority over all powers. The Bible says, he who went down so deep is the one who went up. That is Ephesians chapter 4 verse 10. He went down to the deep. He also went up to the highest so that he can fill everything with himself. And therefore today, I would like us to believe there is enough mercy for you in the blood of Christ. There is enough power for you in the resurrection of Christ. There is enough authority for you in the name of Jesus. It is finished. We don't have any space for compromise and argument. Demons, when you speak the name of Jesus, there's nothing we can compromise. It is finished. Their fate is determined in the name of Jesus. Demons are cast out. In the name of Jesus, Satan must bow. In the name of Jesus, every sin can be forgiven. In the name of Jesus, we have access to the masses of God. And therefore, friends, in just Christ's name, come out of that hopelessness. The blood of Christ starts between you and the Father. There's enough mercy to forgive you. When God, Father looks at the blood of Christ and find you pleading the blood of Christ, you obtain total forgiveness and mercy. And right now, by the blood of Christ, I command you a release. If you are bowed, be released. If you are sick, be healed now. If you are bowed, you have headache, be healed now. If you are bowed in a way that you cannot walk, rise up and walk. I command life to those legs. If you have growths in your stomach, let those growths disappear right now as I speak. In just Christ's name, if you have enemies that are fighting against you and you are so depressed and feel rejected, I declare they are scattered in seven ways. Right now, there's healing power operating all over, all over, all over. Whoever is watching and you are sick, be healed, be healed. Touch that area where you are sick. Be healed now, be healed now, be healed. That stomach pain be over now. Back pain stop now. Arthritis be healed now. The word of God heals you. It is finished. In just Christ's name. Amen.